Hey guys, so we're getting some more stuff done on this thing. Um, I ordered a couple fittings and I ordered some bolts. Um, hopefully that stuff will be in the next couple weeks. Uh, it's all coming out of the, out of the US, so I don't, I'm not sure how long it's gonna take with the whole state of the events in the world here. But um, we're gonna take the in, put the intake plate on. Um, I got tired of waiting, so I actually picked, blasted and painted one. Um, we're gonna put that on. I have the intake gasket sitting there. I hit it with some high tack. Uh, nothing out of the ordinary that I would do. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab that. Um, I'll put that on. And then I have the injection lines. I'm going to put the injection lines on uh, just because I want to get everything capped off. Um, I wish the, the valve covers would show up so I could put the valve covers on. It's starting to look, it's starting to look cool. So I want to, and uh, now I want to get it together. Uh, hopefully the manhole will be, be here next week or two turbo i'm not sure um like i said this isn't going anything for a while so i just you know for me to to spend because it's getting a steed manifold i think anyway uh steed manifold and it's going to get a k27 turbo um so you know there's uh you know a few thousand dollars just sitting on the side of the engine right so uh we're going to do the intake the injection lines the injection pump bracket um and then i'm going to show you guys how i time when you know the engine's at top dead center and the injection pump is timed, how, how I time it up. So anyways, um, I'm gonna go grab the uh, cover and I'm gonna put that into time lapse. When I go to put the injection lines on, I'll bring you back. All right guys, so we got the intake plate on. I just put the old bolts back in for now um, until I get the new ones and I'll swap them around when we get the when we get the new ones but I still haven't I might actually just get a new flange bolt for it but I don't know we'll see what the, we'll see when how long it's gonna take the get those other ones in but so um, we're gonna put uh, the bracket that holds the p-pump on so there was two different styles this is one style I just clear coated this um, but this bolts up inside here this bolts to the block and then the two pieces bolt together so we're going to put the um, this piece in first on the bottom of the injection pump so there's these two bolts big long guys they go down through the injection pump down inside there and there's one on the back side And then this goes, I don't know if you guys can see in there, but it's not threaded on this end and it's threaded on that end. So that piece goes up in the, the non-threaded goes faces towards the driver's side of the block or out, I guess, away from the engine. Need to use power tools. All right. Now I got some power tools. Doing this by hand. Silly. So I don't tighten those until after I get the other bracket in. But you want to snug them. Usually what I'll do is I'll just snug them up and then just loosen them just a little bit. Now, to put in this bracket on, um, these will have um, torques on the end and it's just for clearance issues. So dab of Loctite. So I start this bolt first. So like I said, you can just put it up in there. Not real hard. Dab a Loctite, we're good.
you guys want to torque these, I'm torquing like 20 foot pounds, I just tighten them. Hit them with the impact. Internal stuff is probably is a good idea to uh, make sure you torque stuff, but outside stuff as long as it's tight, I I think. Uh, I shouldn't say that. Some of the outside stuff should be torqued too, but. that up tighten that up so that's as easy as putting the bracket on but at least it's starting to come together here now you know it's just one of those some of this stuff the last five percent of putting an engine together is definitely by far the long part of it um, you know it just it is what it is right so get on this side and what we're gonna do my light add some light to the subject here so we're going to take uh, the old carbide scraper again here and scrape this scrape this surface off just like we did I was going to cut this bracket off but and I usually do on my own stuff, but I kind of got thinking, it's just like, well, or I shouldn't say that. On my, I always cut them because I don't like them in the way, but seeing this is a stock engine, I don't really, I don't need to, I don't need to cut it off. So we're just gonna, uh, I know I'll go grab the bracket and the bolts and the housing and uh, I'll be right back. Thermostat. You want a um, uh, higher temperature thermostat? 197440. Uh, whatever, 197440. Um, so a, let's say a 1970 Dodge Charger with a 440 in it. Um, you can get a 190, uh, I think it's a 190. Now this one's actually a 195. So that, it fits right into the thermostat housing. No modifications required. Thermostat housing, same size. All that jazz. So, just so you guys know, if you wanted to know that, um, or you can just put a Cummins one in it. I, I've used these lots of times, never had an issue. Um, so that's, uh, I will use these ones. So, need to put your thermostat gasket in. Now something that I like to do, if I knew where it was, So something I do, uh, you put your the other half on there. I put a little tiny bit of uh, of uh, case sealant on there, which is actually a little bit more than I usually put on. I put it in between the surfaces. Um, I prefer to do that, and you never have one leak. Usually they don't leak anyway, but you never have one leak. So I like doing that. You don't have, like I said, you don't have to do it if you don't want to. Um, but I like to. Not the bolt that I got. This is the wrong length. So, that's all there is to putting the thermostat housing on. Like I said, the thermostat um, 1970, it fits a whole bunch of years, but just, if you look up 1970 or if you go in somewhere, because lots of times you go in somewhere and you tell them, you know, I want this thermostat, they want to know rear make model, does it have a rear windshield defroster, weird stuff. But anyways, um, so that will uh, that will help you um, if you want a little bit more th temperature out of your Cummins, out of your 12 valve. Um, I do have the 24 valve ones too, which I'll get into um, one day here. Got to get the 12 valve stuff done first here. So. That has that on mounted on there now. Like I said, we're finally starting to get somewhere with this thing. It's, uh, the part hold up kind of sucked because it uh, set us back a long ways. But anyways, so now the next step is going to be 
We are gonna, I'm gonna show you how I set the timing on this.